Good evening, welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Facebook page. My name is Dumi and I am your host. If you are joining us on the Twitter spaces, a special shout out to you. Hope you stay tuned till the end of the conversation because tonight we are bringing you a very interesting topic. As usual, I have a guest who's going to chip into the conversation and give you the necessary information for you to make a wise decision about how to grow your your property portfolio and overall make it work. So tonight we are talking property valuations and I'm joined by Esti LaRue. Esti is the Manager of Valuation Strategy at Secured Lending Cluster. Esti, good evening. Good evening to me. Hope nice you've been be having... Here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Hope you've been having a good week and um, everything's been going great on your side. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> been a new. Have you been great as well? No, absolutely great. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're talking property valuations and um, uh, our Facebook family and the people who are following us really want to know when we're talking property valuations, um, what does this mean? How does it look? And how often does this have to happen? Just before we start to the conversation, I was asking you, is this something I need to do every year? So just take us through the process of property valuation and how that works. Okay, great. So property valuation is uh, does not necessarily ha have to happen every year. I think it is important for everyone to understand the value of their property, um, especially if you want to make use of the equity to invest in, in, in another property maybe. Um, and also when you want to advertise or put your, your property in the market, it's important to understand the value. So property valuers determine the value. They registered professional valuers with the South African Council for the property valuers profession. The council, one of their functions is to protect the, the public in their dealings with professional valuers. So we have a code of conduct, which we must comply with to ensure that the public receives quality valuations when they do uh, employ the services of a valuer. We also comply with the international valuation standards. Um, the valuation standards defines the various methodologies of valuations that we apply. Um, and it also uh, uh, gives us uh, guidance on, on what methodology to apply when and, and how to go about doing this. Sure. And, you know, a lot of a lot of times people just value their property by by coming on to um, private property, for example, and just looking at what their house would cost. Like if they if they live in a cluster or in an estate, they just check how much it is, how much someone else's house is and um, and then think it's their, theirs is the same. Let's talk about houses that are in estates or, or clusters or even apartments. You know, um, there's a lot of things that people can do these days to increase um, the value of their property. Is it the case that you could find um, one house that, that the value ranges highly compared to other houses in the same estate? So from a sectional title perspective, you'll find that properties or units similar in size and layout will uh, get the same purchase or, or have the same value or obtain the same purchase price in the market. So if you have a sectional title unit, you're situated in a complex and you're fortunate enough to know what the selling prices of similar units are in the same complex, then you are able to make a good estimate of what your property should sell for. It's just important to understand that um, finishes also play a role. So um, size, you can definitely consider where the unit is located, also um, can have an impact. Um, for example, if it's a forced four-story building uh, without uh, lifts. Uh, people might be reluctant to climb stairs every day. Um, they might prefer a, a ground unit and those units might be valued a bit more than, for example, a third floor unit. Um, so it's important to understand uh, the variables that impact value, but sectional title is easier um, to compare uh, than, for example, freehold property. Um, freehold property, every property is different and it's unique and um, there's various things that you need to consider when valuing a property. For example, um, the room count, the layout um, of the property, egress and ingress, so how easy is it to get to the property, safety plays a role. So um, it is more popular these days to buy in an estate but it's also expensive because there's levies um, that you have to pay. So there's various considerations. Um, 
when you when you value your property that you need to to pay attention to. Sure. And as a homeowner, um, who who can I trust to come and value my property? You spoke you spoke of um, methodologies and different um, ways that that are used in order to um, to evaluate a property or, or to check the prop- property's value. Who who can I trust? Can an estate agent come in? Um, can a property valuer come in, or is it just something that anyone can do? No. Um, so according to um, the act, you have to be to, to conduct a property valuation, a formal signed valuation. You have to be a registered property valuer with the council, um, which means you enrolled into the necessary um, programs that is approved the degrees or, or diplomas. Um, you register as a candidate, you gain the necessary experience, and then you can move on uh, to becoming an associate professional or professional valuer. Um, estate agents um, very importantly or has, have a very important role to play. Um, they advise customers and they understand the, the neighbourhoods in which they uh, operate. So they are able to estimate or give estimates to, to owners and advise them at what selling prices they, they would attract buyers. Um, but if, for example, you need a formal valuation for court proceeding or sales and execution, then you will call upon the services of a professional valuer, which will give you a signed valuation. Um, I think there's various roles, and, and each of us, estate agents, uh, as well as valuers, has a role to play, an important role to play in the industry. No, definitely. And thank you for that. Um, you know, there's there's this question that keeps on coming up in most of our discussion where we talk about location. You know, in, in, in the property industry, location is something very, very important and it's very pertinent where someone buys or um, if you are looking to invest and, and all of those different um, details. What what happens when, when we're talking about um, valuation? Does the, pro- does the value of a property increase potentially or even decrease because of the, lo- um, the location itself? Definitely. I think um, the old adage remains true, location, location, location. Buying the worst property in the best neighbourhood is possibly Mm. a better investment than buying the best property in the worst neighbourhood. So the demand in the area uh, is impacted by the the, um, popularity of the area. So are there services, the municipal services in that area? Is it reliable? Does the buyer perceive the area to be safe? Um, what is the appearance or the curb appeal of the area or the neighbourhood? Um, uh, is the uh, uh, earths of the different properties well kept? Is the neighbourhood neat? Um, all these things impact the popularity of a neighbourhood. So um, if people want to stay in an area, the demand will increase. If there's an increased demand, uh, sellers would be able to sell at a higher price. Um, when there are certain factors that can impact an area negatively, the demand will decrease and the prices that people are able to get for their properties will also decrease. So to, to attract buyer buyers to an area that is declining for whatever reason, the sellers would need to drop their prices to entice these buyers to buy in that specific area. So it is important. Um, area remains important from a property um, valuation standpoint. Great. Great. Thank you so much. And what, when we're talking area, um, let's also talk amenities because um, – after a location, we talk amenities. What about the amenities? Because they are, they are not necessarily um, secondary, but they are not they are not part of the property. And um, when you're evaluating a property, I think it's only fair maybe we look at the property and not the things that are surrounding it. So just let's talk a little bit more about that and and give us professional advice around this to say, um, do the amenities play a role um, in terms of the the value of the property? Um, so amenities can mean two things. It's either the, the offerings of the property offers or, or the, um, for example, schools, hospitals in close proximity to the property. So both mm. play both a role. Yes. Um, if, I've got, if I've got kids, I would like to stay close to school. Um, if I'm old, um, if I'm, if I'm um, aging, I would like to stay close to a hospital. So all these things play a role at different stages in life. So it's also important to understand when you're buying a property, what are your needs? And um, that will influence where you want to buy a property. So um, 
I think you will note that certain areas, um, there would be um, demand by older people because it's close to hospitals, so there's healthcare services, et cetera. Um, younger people might live further away in smaller uh, properties um, or startups. So amenities uh, and near schools. So amenities plays a role. From a property perspective, what do we consider um, from a property specific uh, perspective, not, not necessarily talking around the area and, and, and amenities in the area? Um, we look at the uh, accommod accommodation offered by the property, obviously. Um, then the layout, does it make sense? Do you have to walk through the main bedroom to get to the entertainment area? Um, you will note that some of the properties you'll see that they added on over time and the layout doesn't make sense anymore. So that mm -hmm. can also have an impact on the value of the property. Then compliance with municipal bylaws is very important. I will never buy a property, my personal uh, opinion is, I won't buy a property if I'm not sure that there's, or if, I'm, if I have not been provided with approved municipal plans for that property. I think it's important to understand um, if you convert, for example, a storeroom into a unit, there's certain um, bylaws that you have to comply with. So bylaws differ from municipality to municipality, um, but that conversion might impact the zoning, um, which needs to be amended or changed to, to uh, make the second unit that you have on your property lawful and also to get the approved plans. And when you apply for a bond, you have approved plans to provide to the bank if they ask for it. So I think um, compliance with municipal bylaws is also important. Then the condition of the property, maintenance, the size of the stand um, I mentioned, um, the size of the improvements and the placement of the, the property on earth is also important. Finishes, type of finishes um, mm. plays a role and uh, the age of the property. No, thank you so much. Um, you were talking uh, specifically about a freestanding house and you know uh, a question just sprung to my mind now to talk about um, the land uh, that the land that the, the house is built on. Does that play a significant role in terms of um, increasing the value of the, the house to say, oh, the, we've got ample space in, in the yard and because these um, these yards are really sectioned by the municipality, what how far um, can one take um, improvements uh, um, when, when this was concerned? So from a, a perspective, from, from building on a stand, there's certain, again, municipal bylaws which you have to comply with. The coverage must be compliant with municipal bylaws um, as, as well as the floor area ratio. Mm. So um, if you want to build on a stand, you must just make sure that when you get an architect, um, obviously they will make sure that you comply with the various bylaws. So it's important or, or a draftsman um, will assist you in that regard as well. Um, the value of a stand, it depends again on the area. Um, yes. A simple example would be if I have a stand that has the view of the ocean uh, near the coast, that will be more expensive than a stand um, at the back that doesn't have a, a view of the ocean. Um, if you build exactly the same improvements on both stands, the, the one will still have more value because of the view it offers than the other property. Um, size of stand, um, I think it depends on the, the, the type of person that buys the property. Um, there's people that prefer lock up and go, it depends on your lifestyle. I think something important that we need to consider when we look at stand sizes are the costs, that municipal costs that are increasing. If you've got a huge stand consideration around water, watering the garden, watering grass, etc. If you if you're dependent on municipal services, that might be expensive. Um, just upkeep uh, maintenance of the garden could also be expensive. A huge house, um, electricity bills. So I think when you buy a house, it's in, it's not only consider the purchase price of the property, but consider the maintenance costs and the upkeep of that property. Um, when you calculate whether you can afford a property or not, I think you must uh, yeah, just consider all the costs relating to a property and then make a decision. 
Sure. No, thank you so much. Such valuable information. And if you are only joining us now, we are talking property valuations and we're joined by Esti LaRue. Thank you so much to everyone who is inter interacting with us on the socials. We really, really appreciate that. Love. Um, special shout outs to Glad, to Glad, to Paulina, to Anelda. Thank you guys. We see you there. We see Bongani as well as Queen. Thank you guys for always coming through and really just engaging with us as we are live. If you think that this information is something really important and you'd like to share it with someone, please copy the link and share it with anybody you believe would benefit from this information and if you are in the market to get a house or you're looking at selling a house or you have um, different investment property that you would like to maybe um, trade or whatever the case may be think about property valuations that seems like a very important thing to do and a step that you shouldn't probably skip so coming back to our conversation uh, uh sd i want to know now with with um with the uh, investments coming up and all of uh, um, or us really looking at uh, those people who have invested in property How, what what can you do at different points in time for you to grow um, the value of your property because one of the things that investors want to do is to grow ultimately grow their investments so what what are those things that uh, a property investor can do to grow uh, the value of their property um, I think it's important to consider the area that your property is located in. What is the nature of the area? As I referred to uh, uh, earlier, um, if the demand in that area is for a two-bedroom home um, and a two-bathroom home and you build a um, six-bedroom home with four bathrooms, um, it, you might be at risk of not being able to, to get the sale price um, that equals the investment you made into that property. So I think firstly, when you invest it, understand the area that you uh, bought in, understand the demand of that area. So what is popular in the area? What do buyers want to buy? Do they want a swimming pool? Do they want to be off grid? Do they want to be um, have a large uh, yard, etc.? So. Um, and I think estate agents there has a very important role to play to advise customers to ensure that when they make, when they renovate um, or make changes, uh, additions to the property, um, the estate agents will be able to guide them um, on what will increase the value of the property and what will increase the marketability of, of a property. Um, features like a black kitchen, for example, it might appeal to you, but when you uh, market the property, you might find that it does not appeal to the wider audience or the, or the wider market. So I think it's important um, if to understand the area and the demand um, in that area and what do, what does what do buyers want uh, in essence when they look at the property uh, in that specific area no definitely yeah. thank you so much esti for talking to us tonight have a good evening you too thank you thank you bye, bye. And just like that, we have reached the end of our conversation tonight, talking property valuations, talking about how to know the value of your property, how to maintain the value of the property, and how, how to go about, you know, if you want to sell the property, check that value because you don't want to sell yourself short. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's conversation. We really, really appreciate that you got to this end. And if you're joining us on the Twitter spaces, shout out to you. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,